Ted and Stuff by Ryan Hunter, read by Dylan Walker. Well, sir, are you prepared to defend your utter? I asked, throwing my head back and shaking it a little to promote the nonchalantness of my challenge. It would have been better if I'd had long golden locks to swish against my neck rather than the few remaining mousy brown curls that stuck haphazardly around my scalp. The baron, or as he insisted, Charles from accounting, stared at me over his tuna on rye. I don't have an... Wait, he said at last. Did you mean defend my honor? Yes, that's what I... Isn't that what I said? He shook his head slowly from side to side. What did I say? Doesn't matter. Crudskins. This always happened. I tried to make a big, splashy demonstration that would finally make Jessica notice me, and I flubbed the line. I didn't find out I'd said otter until that December when the Baron put it in his Christmas card. I looked over at Jessica, hoping she hadn't noticed my faux pas. Luckily, she was ignoring the both of us, what with her sitting on the complete opposite side of the break room and the fact that she seemed to have little idea of our existence. Luck, the Baron said. There's really no need to get all huffy. All I said was that I think she's probably stuck up. That's it, I cried, unsheathing my weapon and brandishing it in the Baron's face. You'll not malign my lady again. The Baron took a moment to wipe the pudding from his face before grabbing my weapon and resheathing it in my handy snack. Ted, seriously, if you attack me with plasticware one more time, I'm going to stop sitting with you at lunch. That was what the Baron always said. If you want to try your luck with her, go right ahead. But you've been saying you're going to ask her out for a decade and a half, and you haven't done it yet. I'm just thinking that if you ever do get the balls to do it, you may find out it's a bit of a disappointment. Grrr. That's an approximation of the sound I made 